In today's video, we're going to continue looking at all the reasons you should be writing fanfiction today. Let's get into it. In today's video, we're going to be discussing characters and plots, patterns in serialized fiction, and crossovers. For young or new writers, learning to write by crafting fanfiction is like a child learning to draw by tracing. When children learn to draw by tracing, they aren't learning any of the higher forms of the art that might make them world-class artists later. But they are learning. They're learning how to hold the pencil, what the scratch of pen on paper feels like, how to draw the basic curves and forms of their favorite artwork. Eventually, they don't need to trace and they can replicate the forms on their own. Then, they can move beyond mere replication to creating original artwork. The same is true of fanfiction. When writing fanfiction, you don't need to worry about developing characters, world building, plot, themes, structure, story arcs, etc. For the most part, these things are done for you. If you're part of a particular fandom, you should already be familiar with the characters and world's lore of that fandom. Developing your own unique stories requires you to think intricately about character, world building, politics, geography, and other details of the world you're creating. Fanfiction can help you train your brain to think in those terms because you're piggybacking on a world that already exists. Once you understand the structures and patterns these worlds are based on, you can branch out into your own unique fiction. Before we continue, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell so YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. And don't forget to check the description of this video for book recommendations as well as all the tools and resources I use in my writing and video production. Back to the video. Serialized fiction, like that in TV, books, and movies, tend to follow certain patterns in their stories. These story structures tend to carry over from episode to episode. You can use this story structure that you're already familiar with as part of that fandom to give a boost to your own writing. One example of a serialized story structure that's very predictable is almost every episode of the Power Rangers. At the start of each episode, the Rangers are presented with some moral dilemma that divides the group. The villain of that particular season or series attacks, insert name of sleepy generic town here. The Rangers attack the boss's minions and defeat them. The boss sends a monster to attack them which often exemplifies and exacerbates the moral dilemma at the start of the show. The rangers defeat the monster and the boss makes the monster grow to the size of a building. Because... Japan, I guess. The rangers transform into their zord phase and defeat the monster. The defeat of the monster brings catharsis and resolves the moral dilemma introduced at the start of the show. Now the great part is that once you understand the tropes of a particular genre, you don't need to rigidly adhere to them. You can bend them and see what happens. What if the Zords are broken and the Rangers need to get up close and personal? What if the boss loses control of the monsters and needs to team up with the Rangers to stop it? What if defeating the monster fractures the team instead of resolving the moral dilemma at the beginning of the program? In this way, you can also learn how to subvert expectations in fiction in a way that is safe. And the community will let you know with engaging feedback how well your subversions hit the mark. When I write fanfic, one of my favorite things to do is the crossover. It's incredibly fun for me to take two characters who would never otherwise meet and dump them into a crucible together. When you do that and just allow the characters to be themselves, sparks can fly in interesting ways you never considered before. In The Eternal Crypt, which is unfinished on fanfic.net, I put Doctor Who and Indiana Jones together. I expected the two to become friends, which they eventually did. What I didn't expect, after just letting the characters be themselves, was how they started butting heads over who was the better adventurer. This led to some interesting one-liners and quips between the two that I didn't anticipate when going into the work. Writing characters in fanfiction, especially if you do crossovers like I do, will allow you to explore organic character interactions in a fun and safe way. Another great way to experiment with organic character development is with character chat. This is where you enter a chat with someone online as one of your favorite characters. I just learned about this technique and haven't tried it yet, but I'm very excited about it. I think character chat is probably the better option for developing organic character interactions, but fanfic is a close second in my opinion. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to wrap up the series and discuss creating original characters in fanfiction, using fanfiction to get to know yourself better, using fanfiction to take a break from your regular writing, and how writing fanfic can spur your career as a writer. I'll see you there. 
Until next time, good writing and Calamus Gladio Fortior.